This week on the show, we have motivational speaker and disability advocate, Spencer West. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding why failure and rejection is simply the universe's way of realigning and putting you on the path for what's meant for you. Have you ever wanted something so badly that not receiving it felt like failure? We ask ourselves, why would this happen? How could things have not worked out trying to desperately seek answers to ease our disappointment? But the reality is what feels like rejection or failure is simply the universe moving the pieces of the puzzle around to ultimately align you for what's better for your growth, prosperity, and happiness long-term. We all have a situation or experience in our lives where something we hoped would have worked out didn't, but ultimately worked in our favor long term and was replaced with something even better. Trust in divine timing and remind yourself that things will manifest when they are meant to happen. As Abraham Hicks quotes, the entire universe is always conspiring to give you everything you want. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, took the leap to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Now that's a difficult pursuit for anybody and you took it on. So let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, part of my job is I'm a motivational speaker and I was traveling a lot and telling folks, you know, you need to run campaigns, you need to make a difference on causes you care about. And that's how the rest of the climb was gonna be. And that's not what we had trained for. And so there were a lot of moments where I thought, this is way too hard, can my body handle this? And my friends were amazing and not only saying encouraging words, but physically carrying me when it went when it was possible. And then what was so interesting is that on summit day, the roles reversed and around 18,000 feet, which Kilimanjaro was just under 20,000 feet, uh, my buddies got altitude sickness and I didn't. Oh, wow. And suddenly they needed my help, which I, that never crossed my mind that I was gonna need to, to help them. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have motivational speaker and disability advocate, Spencer West, raising over $500,000 for clean water projects in Kenya. Spencer took on the task of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro despite not having any lower limbs to showcase to the world that anything is possible. Spencer, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? It's my pleasure. It's so nice to see you again. Yes, I know. It's so exciting because I was just telling you that you were one of my first interviews uh, when I graduated from college. So yeah, this we're going full circle now with my own show. So yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> Amazing. Well, congratulations too on the show. I'm, I'm so honored to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you. And, you know, before we get into all of the amazing things you've accomplished, because you have such uh, an amazing story. Um, but let, let's talk about the beginning and how it all started. Um, let's talk about your story first. Um, I know that your legs were amputated when you were just mm. five years old due to a genetic mm. disorder. So t tell our viewers a little bit about what happened. Yeah, so uh, no one knew anything was wrong with me until I was born. Mm -hmm. And then I was born, my legs looked very different. And so after a bunch of tests, they realized that I had a genetic disease called sacralogenesis, which basically affects the sacrum, which is between like your spine and your, your pelvis. And it has varying degrees. And what they discovered is that it caused the muscles in my legs not to work. So I had two surgeries. The first was at the age of two in hopes that I could use prosthetic legs and get around that way, but it didn't work. So then at the age of five, they removed just below my pelvis. And the idea was that I would maybe try prosthetics again and also double that with like getting around on my hands, potentially using a wheelchair. Because mm -hmm, you you managed to adapt pretty well, because even when I saw you, you really used your hands as legs. So let's talk about how you like learn to adapt. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing uh, as I look back and, you know, when we look at disability justice, it was so different then. you know, the idea was you were going to overcome your, your disability and you wanted to be seen just like everyone else. And part of that was they wanted me to use prosthetics because they said every kid wants to walk. Mm. And for me, it felt like such a lie. I'm like, people know that I don't have any legs. Yeah. For me, why would I pretend like I do? And it was easier for me to walk around on my hands and use a wheelchair. Or I would like ride a skateboard to school. Like all those things were so much faster and easier for me. Prosthetics. Yeah. 
yeah. Dead legs are so helpful for some folks with disabilities, but for me, they were more of a hindrance. Specifically in the 80s, the technology wasn't like it is now, and they were really difficult to use. It took me 10 times longer to get anywhere than I needed to go. Oh, very interesting that you preferred not having them. Very interesting. Um, I want to talk about, you, you spoke about uh, bullying in school. So I want to talk about how you dealt with that, because that's a common thing that happens to so many kids getting bullied, and it's hard to deal with, right? And sometimes kids don't talk about it. So, so how did you deal with it? Yeah, you know, I, for me, I, I had a really strong sense of self and I had a really supportive family. And then I also have some really supportive friends mm. uh, who've been my friends since grade seven and we were sort of there for each other. And, and again, we're, we're still friends today, you know, 30 years later, which is amazing. And what I found is that when I was starting to talk about some of the things I was experiencing in school in regards to me being bullied, my friends were having some of the same things happen to them. And that really sort of brought us closer. And on those days when it felt difficult, they were the people that I could go to. They were the people that I could talk to about the emotions that I was feeling based on what I experienced. And, you know, even today as an adult, being someone that identifies as gay and disabled, the bullying never really goes away in some regard. You know what I mean? It just looks different as you get older. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's always been about having that support system. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do like about you is you're authentically yourself, you know, you don't try to be anyone else. And that's really a goal for everyone in life, right, is to just be authentically you. So was that something that, you know, you've always had or was it something you grew into or was it something that you felt you could do with the support? You know, you have wonderful friends and family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, this is such a lovely question. I, for me, it's like I, I grew into it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, it took me a really long time to... Um, understand that my sexuality was an option and that it was an okay option and so I didn't come out until I was 21 and that for me was really the start of understanding what living authentic meant to me. I, I have a disability and it's very visible and that, that part was like it was sort of done and over with. I experience it every day but it was leaning into my sexuality and then you know as as I get older leaning into the things that make me uniquely me mm -hmm. and and I also think it's really important to say like I've had a lot of help not only from friends and 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 family, but also, you know, I see a therapist twice twice a month uh, to help understand why I do the things that I do and when those things are difficult. So it's always a work in progress, but I feel like I'm in a pretty good place where, where I'm, I have a pretty good idea of, of who I am and, and who I want that to be. And I'll just keep uh, learning as I go, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's true. It takes a, a while to step into your authentic self, you know, because mm -hmm. when we're younger, sometimes we think that it's cool to be someone else or to aspire, but then when, once you become yourself and you're just authentically you, it feels good, right? And life becomes easier <laughs> because you're just being yourself. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. And I think that's like one of the biggest lessons that I've learned, right? Is like, I was constantly trying to fit myself inside a box and I just never fit. You know, my body physically looks different, so I never fit there. Uh, being gay, I never fit in sort of the heteronormativity of society. And so I, what I started to realize as I was going through this journey was like, oh my God, it's just so much easier and so less exhausting to just be me. And yeah. as I've heard RuPaul say, you know, what everyone, what, any, what other people think of me is none of my business. Yeah, <laughs> so. that, that's a good one. I love that. It's really true. What, what other people think of us really is in our business. And it's good not to know and just to just be you, right? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I want to talk about all the amazing things you've done. Um, you took the leap to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Now that's a difficult pursuit for anybody and you took it on. So let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, part of my job is I'm a motivational speaker and I was traveling a lot and telling folks, you know, you need to run campaigns, you need to make a difference on causes you care about. And that's how the rest of the climb was going to be. And that's not what we had trained for. And so. There were a lot of moments where I thought, this is way too hard, can my body handle this? And my friends were amazing at not only saying encouraging words, but physically carrying me when it went, when it was possible. And then what was so interesting is that on summit day, the roles reversed and around 18,000 feet, which Kilimanjaro is just under 20,000 feet, um, my buddies got altitude sickness and I didn't. Oh, wow. And suddenly they needed my help, which I, that never crossed my mind that I was gonna need to, to help them. And I couldn't physically carry them, but. The entire journey they kept saying it's really inspiring to watch you walk so yeah i just stood it between them and i said listen we're just going to go as far as we can and um we'll see what happens but i'm grateful to say that we we made it to the top very slowly <laughs> yeah and what helped you push through the pain and you know obviously the uncomfort it's it, it's i know a few people that climb on kilimanjaro and only one person out of the whole team actually climbed it so this is not a you know easy 
pursuit to do. So <laughs> you're, you're talking about it so casually, <laughs> but it, it's a, it's such a, you know, accomplishment. So how did you push through the pain and that, that discomfort and, you know, tell your mind, I'm going to keep going no matter what. Yeah. I, you know, for me, it was, it was just, let's just keep taking it step by step and, and see where we end up. Uh, the other piece for me is, you know, our goal was a half a million dollars for clean water. Yeah. And so to be able to uh, safely suffer through, you know, uh, eight and a half days of, of pain to make sure that 12,500 people would never have to worry about, uh, you know, finding clean water again, that, that was the reason, you know what I mean? So it was those two things of my buddy's encouragement and then the whole purpose of why we were climbing in the first place. Mm -hmm. And you got to experience uh, such an amazing thing with your friends. So how was that, you know, having your two best friends there with you and, and sharing such an incredible moment? Yeah, you know, in an age, and it, obviously it was a little bit ago, but in an age where technology is, is so important and we're connected all the time, to be literally disconnected from the world uh, was really lovely. Uh, and my, my buddies and I always have good conversation, but, you know, when, when you're on the side of a mountain and the world has disappeared and you're above the cloud line, all you, all you have is to reflect on is who you are and your friendship and the, the feelings that you're experiencing as we're all doing this together. So for us, it was a really cool adventure that, that we'll never forget. You know, and this year is the 10th, 10th anniversary of us wow. climbing. So we planned like a cottage weekend in the summer Aww. to just like be together and to reminisce about what that was like. It was just one of those adventures that you'll never be able to explain to, fully to everyone else. Mm. But it was such a cool experience that we had together that we'll always share. Mm -hmm. What's one thing you learned about yourself during, you know, the process? Because I'm sure there were some lessons along the way. <laughs> yeah, the, one of the most important things that, that, that sort of I take away from that whole experience is, is, well, it's two things. Number one is the importance of asking for help and the importance of offering help. You mm -hmm. know, in the beginning, I asked my friends if they would help me and then the, the role reversal of me needing to offer them help. I think that was a really important lesson. And then I remember as we were getting ready to go, uh, a friend of mine said, well, what if you don't make it? And I never thought of that before. And uh, an hour later, I went back to her and I was like, you know what, then we don't make it. And then mm. there's something beautiful in that as well um, that we would bring back. Now that wasn't the case, but I think for me, it was the idea that like failure is okay mm. and that it's, it's important. And if we did fail, that would be okay. And we'd figure out what we learned from there and move forward. Mm -hmm. I like that you said asking for help because I, I feel like that's something I can sh I struggle with a lot. I, I never like to ask for help, but you know, even my guest last week uh, said the same thing. So I feel like this is a message from the universe <laughs> for me to when I need help is to ask for it. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's a, it, a good lesson. <laughs> yeah. And it's and it's so hard to put into practice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm very good at asking for help with the big stuff. But it's the little things that I'm still like, no, I'll just figure it out. And then I suffer through it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. It's good to just ask and have that uh, teamwork, right? Um, exactly. The one amazing thing that, you know, I took away from your video and everything, and everything you do is really redefining possible. I know that's your motto. So let's talk about what that means to you. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, so oftentimes, as we were talking about earlier, we're, we're asked to be put in a box. Uh, and we're asked to be seen or do things a, a certain way, uh, or there's expectations of us. And so for me, you know, I have, I truly believe we have the capacity to redefine the limits of our own human potential. That looks different for everyone, but I guess at the end of the day, what I sort of live my life by is at least I'm gonna try. Mm. There's no harm in trying. And if I don't succeed, that's okay. And if I do, that's amazing. But at the end of the day, I'd rather know that I tried something than, than just ignored it altogether, you know what I mean? So I think for me, that's what sort of redefine possible is, is, is looking at what are your limits and how can you push those limits a little bit further um, to, to see what you can achieve. And, and if you don't reach that goal, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing that you wanted people to take away from you climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, what's one thing you'd want people to know? I think it's that we all have the capacity to to give back and as as Glenn and Doyle would say, do hard things, you know? And, and, and I think that's the most important piece. It's gonna look different. Not every disabled person is gonna be able to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And that wasn't actually the focus of that. The idea was, you know, how do we how do we take the gifts that we've been given and how do we use those in such a way to not only, you know, help ourselves, but also help the people around us. And that was sort of the, the idea behind all of that. Um, 
is if, if I can do this, I'm not saying you should go climb Kilimanjaro, but if I have the capacity to make a difference, then you all can figure out in your own way with your abilities to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's uh, a great message and, and really important. Um, let's talk about your TikTok channel. It's, I love it. It's so entertaining and um, it's funny. And it also sheds light on really important issues like, um, you know, LGBT issues, um, mm. you know, just you're just kind of shedding light on even your personal situation. So tell us about your TikTok channel and what can people take away from it? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm so grateful that TikTok has become a, a really helpful platform for me in so many ways. But, you know, what I try to do with all social media is use it as a way to infuse a little heart, humor, honesty, and then awareness. Mm -hmm. And as long as my content has a little bit of that um, in some capacity, then, then I feel like I've done my job for the day. What's really amazing about social media is it allows us to, to reach a larger audience. And specifically when we look at, you know, folks with disabilities, um, this is a great platform and a great way to be able to get our message out without having to leave home. And I think for a lot of folks that can be a really helpful tool. And so for me, TikTok has sort of be, become that and, and it's become a place where I can uh, show other queer disabled folks that we exist. Mm -hmm. We're here and we're worthy of love and we're worthy of having a, a, a place in the community in, in which we call home and helping folks understand the barriers that both you know queer folks and disabled folks face on a daily basis and how we can all sort of be allies in, in both of these communities to help break down some of those barriers. Mm -hmm. And what kind of feedback have you got from your audience? Because you have a huge audience, people love you. So I'm sure there are people who have reached out and really um, benefited from your content. It's been really lovely. Um, everyone is so kind and uh, to me, Everyone's feedback is obviously means the world to me, but the one, the feedback that really touches my heart is when someone, um, you know, has watched a video and they felt inspired or empowered to come out, or, mm -hmm. you know, they were uh, someone that identifies as queer and disabled and realize that they weren't alone, that, that we exist and that representation is out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, it's that connection because I was that kid in the crowd looking for someone else to to emulate, you know, queer disabled folks even now don't have a lot of rep visible representation in the media and, you know, in TV and movies. And so, you know, my hope is to, is, is to be that. And so when, when I get that feedback of like, oh, I'm not alone, mm -hmm. uh, that's the best. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you are an inspiration. Yesterday, I showed my niece and nephew your video um, from climbing uh, Mount Kilimanjaro and they were in awe. And they were like, wow, like anything is really possible, you know, like it really teaches kids or anybody that anything's possible. If you if you have a goal and you have a vision, you can do it. Right. So you're definitely inspiring a lot of people. Thank <laughs> uh, you. Spencer, let's talk about your current projects. What are you currently working on? Yeah, you know, for now, I'm just I'm currently speaking, you know, I'm I'm, I'm available to do virtual speeches and if if it's safe to do so in person every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, I'm creating content, of course, for uh, for Instagram and, and TikTok. And I don't have like any huge projects coming up just yet, but um, we're, we'll, we will be working on some fun things coming soon. So for now, it's just speaking and continuing to create content um, and hopefully educating folks on, on you know, my lived experience. Mm, very nice. And, you know, I always like to end the show on a positive note because I created this platform to inspire, to uplift and show anything is possible. So, Spencer, for some, one of our viewers or anybody watching that maybe is going through a tough time, not seeing their goals manifest or just mm -hmm. maybe feeling alone, not feeling good. Well, what advice would you have for them to uplift them and inspire them? Yeah, I think the one thing that I've always had an abundance of is hope. And so I heard a quote from a TV show um, a long time ago called Queer as Folk. And uh, the quote sort of went like this, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, you know, when we're faced with difficult situations, sometimes you just have to hang on until the scenery changes. Mm -hmm. But the scenery will always change. And it's and it's the middle part that's hard. And, and, and if you can hang on until that scenery changes, it will eventually, in some regards, get better. And I also, you know, I've, I've got a really incredible friend who's taught me some important lessons of, you know, always speak your truth, know your worth, and remember why you're here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Spencer, so much for being on the show today. Continue being a beacon of light to the world, and we hope to have you back soon. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.
You can fly higher than the sky.